and good day. Hey, welcome to the Super Good Camping Podcast. My name is Pamela. I'm Tim. And we are from supergoodcamping.com. We are here because we are on a mission to inspire other families to enjoy camping adventures such as we have with our kids. Camping can be a cost-effective or a cheap way to enjoy the great outdoors in Canada. Here's some great ways you can make it a bit more affordable. So one, you could choose non-commercial campgrounds. We, generally speaking, have we ever camped anywhere except a, an Ontario Provincial Park? I don't think so. Not, no, not as a couple. No. No. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, Ontario Provincial Parks are a re- reasonable option and have nice amenities and they're clean and well kept and there's organized activities. Um, so they can be more budget friendly than privately owned campgrounds. National parks and provincial parks do offer reasonable, reasonably priced camping options. Yeah, I, I can't say that I can speak much to privately owned campgrounds. Uh, I have spoken to people and I've done some reading, but I personally have never camped at a, a privately owned campground. They look like they don't have enough trees and stuff for me. Just that my own my own take on it. So, and too many trailers and stuff. I like I like tents. I like canoes. Yeah, uh, I. And back country is cheaper than front country, but you don't have all the amenities. You have a thunderbox. You you don't have a <laughs> comfort station with a shower and stuff. You can so the, you could save money by sharing a campsite. If we're going as a full family, that's four of us. Now it seems to be maybe just two of us, because <laughs> the kids don't like us anymore. Right. But so so we could get out and camp with another couple. Four people on a site is cheaper than uh, two people on two two sites. How many tents are they allowed on a site, do you know? They're, each one is rated differently, anywhere from one to, I think, three. And I think you're t- you total out at, it, it, again, speaking for Ontario, uh, friend country, provincial parks, you, I think you total out at six six people on a site, uh, front country, uh, back country. In some cases, you can have up to nine people, which is insane so that sort of defeats the purpose of going into the back country to get away from people uh, but but uh, in that case there are some back country that's i think they're still calling them trial programs uh, i want to say some of algonquin back country and shoot massasauga maybe uh they're running a program where it's a it's a blanket rate for a campsite uh it's very comparable to front country rates, which is quite expensive for for those of us that camp in the back country. But if you've got nine people dividing forty five bucks, it's five bucks a piece, right? So Perfect. it's there for it's there for people that are are into that. Yeah, well, and that's not not bad. I mean, if at front country, if you've got six people, two like three couples, sharing a site, yeah, uh, that's pretty reasonable. Fifteen dollars a night for accommodation. Yep. Bring your own gear. So renting camping gear can get expensive. If possible, try to bring your own stuff or borrow gear from like people like us who have <laughs> multiple tents and we, multiple sleeping bags. We, and we are actually lending our gear at the end, some of our gear at the end of June to uh, to a neighbor. <laughs> we do we do lend out our stuff. Yep. And cook your own meals. That's always less expensive than than takeout meals or buying food. So I mean, we do that at home like 90, 95% of the time we make our own meals at home. Uh, we do 100% of the time we make our own meals when we're camping. Yeah, although we do we do special meals. We'll do things like ribs and throw lobster tails and foil in the fire and, you know, T-bone steaks. It's still, it's still cheaper than going out for dinner. And I'm telling you, anything cooked over an open flame is so much yummier than you know uh, as long as you're as long as you're not burning the crap out of it it go go for it it's it's going to be cheaper and it's going to be so yummy well and eating outdoors after a full day of hiking or swimming or or canoeing is always you're really hungry and the food tastes really good no, no matter what anyway yep um well, there and that is the one time per year that we might actually stop in for junk food on the way home <laughs> it's from on our way home from camping after a yep. week of camping yeah and usually... the kids are like yeah junk food <laughs> yeah something something fast and crappy uh look for free camping options which is something that we haven't done uh i don't know you haven't done no we're going to take a shot at it this summer thomas and i are going to try to do queen elizabeth two wildlands uh, which is a non-operating provincial park so it's still in the system but i don't have to book it and stuff so it's actually free yeah, so you show up and 
you hope you, that yes, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a crapshoot. Uh, we're not going to be able to get there till September, so it'll be way less of a crapshoot than it would be in, say, oh, July. Um, but yeah, uh, and what's so uh, Crownland as well? I think I think south of the border they call it diverse camping. It's essentially the same thing. It's it's government owned land that you just you just go and you you camp wherever the heck you want, wherever you can get to, I suppose. When we were talking to Martin Pine in the winter, and he's. Uh, into igloo building and he was saying like Crownland you could build your igloo on Crownland and then have that same igloo to come back to all winter long to camp in which is pretty cool there you go um, so planning shorter trips uh, is it could, could be could be cheaper you know if you get away for a weekend you're not going to be you can take you can take an option like uh, the park bus and and which is a uh, We'll, we'll put a link to it in uh, in our in the description, uh, but you, it's cheaper, uh, and they run they run s- scheduled trips. Is that the right term? Yeah. All right, uh, to to a whole bunch of different provincial parks and conservation areas. Uh, cheaper cheaper than paying for your car, for your fuel, for your insurance, and much better for the environment. So win all around. Well, several people we've talked to too about how often they're able to go camping have said like. What we do is rather than use up all of our vacation time, we'll take a, we'll take a long weekend, tack a vacation day onto that. And that gives us four days to go camping, and we can do that like three or four times a year. And so then there's like four camping trips a year. Yeah, and not even use up a whole week of their vacation time. So that's cool. It, a little bit more insane with traffic and stuff like that, which is what dissuades me from doing it. But you know, we do we do. We do do that once in a while. And then you've got the option of, of local camping. So, again, back to, we're here in southern Ontario. There, Bronte Creek is is actually quite cl- close, well, like 40 minutes maybe, something right. like that from here. Um, you know, you, you get to hear a bit of highway noise, but it's it's still fantastic camping. Uh, you know, you can go in the fall when the colors are beautiful. There's a, a Camping with the Coles video uh, up right now that they, they went... I think was their was their last trip last yes yes it was their last trip of last summer uh, so 2022 and, and it's gorgeous in the fall um, and there's you know a nice little stream and, and and stuff like that so you can do that sort of deal um, conservation areas there are plenty of conservation areas certainly here in and around southern Ontario uh, and varied once uh, there's stuff up on the escarpment there's all kinds of great stuff to do uh, and you don't it's so you're not going as far you're not going to spend as much money on all the all the the travel bits you know gasoline and, and whatnot yeah, and here in toronto uh darlington is close preskill's not not t- a terribly long trek uh, bronte creek as to mention and we loved bronte creek especially like if you've got young children it's just awesome they've got um they've got a, a barn full of bar- uh, like farm animals they've got uh, a barn that they've converted into an indoor playground they've got uh, an old um, farmhouse that has been con- converted into like where they do educational programs and there's a big swimming pool uh, there's not a, a natural body of water to swim in like a lake but um, they've, they've kind of compensated for that by having the big swimming pool but yeah it's a great place to take kids yeah there's i mean there's other close ones too there's one of the lake simple ones uh, sybil point and i think it's bass lake they're good through the week so <laughs> <laughs> just saying if you've listened to you've heard tim's take on sybil on the weekend yeah uh, so just remember to check the specific campground websites check local tourism boards camping forums camping facebook groups uh, updated information on fees and discounts and available resources and you might find that off peak times are at, at not so much provincial parks i don't think that they discount i don't think so uh, rates at all but um at other at private campgrounds you might find that some of them will discount rates at off peak times and well your facebook group idea so i know that there are where you, you transfer it's i think to say you're selling uh your reservation is you're not allowed to do that I, think uh, but you can transfer it to somebody else and and you may pay them part of the cost you might get it for cheaper is what i'm what i'm saying um some people you know they just they just get boned uh, they took a vacation and then something came up at work or you know a life who knows a something something comes up and they can't go so they may be interested in not losing their shirt on the reservation and you, you may come out of it uh, 
win-win for everybody. So it might be cheaper to do things that way. There's lots of groups where you can can become, like they're looking for camping partners. So often it seems to be backcountry stuff, but you know there are people that like to go front country and then go on hikes and stuff like that. Why not? Check out those groups. Who knows? There could very well be, I haven't done any research on it, but there could very well be um, you know, groups that you can become a member of and that, that may, there, it may lead to some, some cheaper alternatives for you. That's it for us for today on cheaper camping in Ontario or in, in Canada. Uh, please do reach out to us. We would love to hear from you if you have any other ideas about cheap ways to make your camping trip even less, more cost effective. I'm Pamela. I'm still Tim. And we are still from supergoodcamping.com. Please do reach out to us. We are hi at supergoodcamping.com. That's H-I at supergoodcamping.com. And we are on all the social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye.